Welcome back. I'm Emily from Python Easy and in this tutorial we are going to learn how to cartoonify this photo to this one. So let's go directly to our tutorial here. First, we're gonna import our famous library which we are gonna use in this tutorial which is called OpenCV or CV2 in this case. So OpenCV and Pillow Library and if you remember the in the previous tutorial, we were using PILO library or PIL library. Uh, OpenCV and PILO are both popular Python libraries used for image processing and computer vision tasks. But, you know, they have different strengths and disadvantages or advantages depending on the specific use of case. Okay, what are the advantage of the OpenCV, which is the reason that we are using in this session uh, to help you to get familiar with this library. One of the advantages of this library over Pillow is the ability to handle a real-time video processing and computer vision tasks, such as object detection, tracking, or even face recognitions on the video. Uh, also, another advantage of the OpenCV is the support for a wide range of image and video file formats, including both, like you could say, compressed or uncompressed formats. On the other hand, you know, Pillow is better suited for tasks that involve image manipulation such as resizing, cropping, or just applying some filters. And that's all. So in this tutorial, finally, we're going to use CV2 and you're going to just detect the difference between this library and the previous one, which was Pillow. So let's continue our tutorial. Uh, first of all, we're going to import our OpenCV library and then we're going to try to open our image with this library. So I'm going to call it IMG, our data, which is our image or raw image and cv2 dot read name of the folder. So, here by this just command cv2 point I am read the name of the photo, we are gonna import our photo to the Python environment. So, as the first step after importing our uh, raw photo into the Python, uh, I'm gonna just apply manual image thresholding. Here, I'm gonna use underscore wiggle by edge image and I'm gonna use cv2 cv2 point threshold and I'm gonna import image and I'm gonna set our threshold amount to 127 and my maximum one is 255 and I'm gonna use CV2 point trash underscore binary. So I'm gonna explain right now about this command line and next I'm gonna try to just save the image and uh, the command for the saving processing is CV2 point I'm right and uh, we're gonna just name it edge that gpg and i'm gonna use this edge image as our mine so let's come back here and explain you more about uh, this command line which is so important uh, in my opinion so first of all it's very really important that here in this line uh, we have just applied a manual image thresholding using cv2.threshold function here to create you know a binary image where all pixels with intensities greater than 127 this is the amount of intensity all the pixels greater than this intensity are set to 2555, 
which is our maximum intensity, which is dedicated to white color. And we have used CV2.trash binary method to do this. Another important is that maybe you would ask this underscore here. Why we have used underscore velgula followed by age image here. So why we didn't use directly age image. That's relating all about CV2. Uh, oh, sorry, it should be a dot here. CV2 threshold function here. This function, CV2 threshold, uh, is just returning uh, two values to us. One of them is the value of the, like, you know, threshold. And the second value which is returning this function is our thresholded image or our modified image. So in this case, we don't need the, like, thresholding value. It doesn't matter to us. So we have just skip the first parameter so i have put underscore which means i don't need that parameter so i have skipped that and for the second parameter i have called it age image which means i want to just a returning or just a meaningful image for this parameter so uh, let, let's talk a bit more about this uh, just uh, function which means i mean 255 and 127 uh, so it's very important to know, it's, it's really vital actually, you know, that OpenCV library is using BGR, just color model, to just mm, process the images. It's very important to know the difference between BGR and RGB color models. Because uh, Pillow, just library, is using RGB format while OpenCV is using BGR. You know, BGR and RGB are two different color models just used to present colors in digital images. The main difference between BGR and RGB is just order in which color channels are arranged. So in the RGB color model, the red channel is usually the first channel followed by green and blue, which gives rise to the you know, term RGB. In the R, uh, in the, while, well, uh, in the BGR color model, the blue channel is usually the first channel followed by green and red, which gives rise to the term BGR. So let's talk about also this 255. As you could see here, on this photo, this is a scale to show us the intensities just between the minimum amount and the maximum amount. And regarding the grayscale image, our minimum amount, which is zero here, refers to a black one, which is the just minimum amount. While 255, which is our maximum amount, refers to just white color. So, Regarding our digital images, which is a colored image, it doesn't matter RGB or BGR. So while talking about a black and white or grayscale image, we are just talking about one channel. But talking about a RGB or BGR images, you know, we have three different channels. So as you could see here, we have three different channels, blue, green, and red. And each channel has its minimum or maximum amount. So, using cv2.threshold function, I'm just, mm, uh, wanna command the Python, okay, in all of the channels separately, when it blue, blue, green, or red, you should, just starting from 127, which is exactly the middle intensity between zero and 255. For all the channels, I'm just commanding that, okay, for just all the pixels greater than this threshold, just put to the maximum intensity, while for the others, put it to minimum. So, you could see the result here. I'm gonna save it here. And as you could see here, this is our final result. And you could see the difference between our original image from Katy Perry 
to this modified one. So you see that just by a simple a line of code, we have created this amazing effect. So next, I'm going to just show you another technique, which is very, very simple also like this to just create another interesting one. So here, I want to reduce the color of the original photo by simple method. It's called a simple just floor division. So what is floor division? Okay, let's start from here. I have a parameter. I'm going to call it F. Doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to call it F and I'm going to just dedicate 66 to it. So I'm going to call I mean, I just want to define a new image. I'm going to call it R underscore image, which stands for reduced image. I just want to reduce the colors or reduce the intensities of color. So I'm going to use my main image here and I'm going to use this operator here, double slash, followed by this. So it's better to notice that this operator here, double slash, is just not a normal, you know, operator of division. Since if we're gonna use just a normal division, which is one slash mark, uh, the result of this division could be a float number or integer. But when we are using double slash mark or floor division, we are just gonna do a normal division followed by rounding down the number to the nearest integer. It's so important because while working with the pictures or images, we need something like uh, integer. So this is the reason. So followed by F multiple by F. It's so important that our image is a two dimensional array since we are working on the width and the length of this photo so we are going to use f multiple by f and there is another important point that i'm going to add another just um, parameter here f just simple followed divided by half of the f so uh, this just addition uh, will shift the pixel values so they are centered around the middle of the new image. So I'm just going to ask you uh, to just change this F parameter and maybe removing also this amount to see the effect. And you are free to do whatever you want. You also could just change the amount of threshold here to see also the effect. So I have produced another image which is called R underscore image and uh, I'm gonna save it here also to show you the effect so I'm gonna call it just reduced and uh, I'm gonna import just this amount so as you could see here, for the second technique, which is a very simple floor division technique, we have created this amazing photo. So just only by one line of coding, we have created this. So let's just uh, finish up this video and I'm gonna just introduce the last technique. It's just converting the BGR photo, just do remember that while working on OpenCV or CV2 library, we are always working on the BGR. So here I'm so interested to convert this BGR to RGB photo. So I'm going to call my new data R underscore image RGB. So here I'm going to use a function called CV2 dot CVT color and I'm going to import 
r underscore image and I'm going to use this function cv2 dot color bgr to rgb. This is a function defined uh, on this library and we're going to use it to convert this process. I mean just converting the bgr photo to rgb. So again like usual, I'm going to save it and I'm going to call it RGB photo and I'm going to save it the GPG format and here I'm going to just our IMG RGB. So as you could see here, I have created this amazing one just by changing or converting our BGR photo to RGB. And that's the matter of orders between the channels of blue and red. And you could see the effect of this. So in the next video, we are going to just change the topic and I'm going to introduce you an amazing technique in Python to create your own ChatGPT version. And I'm sure that you are already familiar with this amazing AI tool, ChatGPT. So thank you again for watching this video. And for more videos, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, Python Easy.